question. Just going to share my screen with you. Okay, so our learn and objective today is to multiply and divide by six, and this is going to be the reasoning and problem solving lesson. So you could pause the video now, write today's date and learn objective and underline those. Okay, brilliant. So let's have a go at the review questions. So here I want you to have a go at completing the table. So we've got numbers times six, one times six, 10 times six, which is completed, 100 times six and 1000 times six, and then complete the missing numbers here. And then seven times six is equal to something times seven. So pause the video now while you have a go at these. OK, so let's look through our answers. So one times six we know is six. Ten times six is 60. So 100 times six is 600. And 1,000 times 6 is 6,000. Then 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 4 times 6 is 24. And 8 times 6 is 48. Did you spot a pattern there? That's right. Each time the numbers were doubling. And then seven times six is equal to six and seven. Okay, great. So our first explore this morning. So we're going to just remind ourselves of what we looked at last lesson about um, the six times table, multiplying and dividing by six and thinking about groups, or how many groups there were, um, uh, how we might share into equal groups. So the first question is, let's complete this fact family. So how many groups are there all together here? How many equal groups are there? So there's one, two, three, four equal groups. And how many in each group? So we can see there's six in each group. So we're going to have a go at completing the fact family. And just to remind you, a fact family is a group of calculations that can be created using the same three numbers. So let's have a look at this one. So we said that there were four equal groups of six. So four times six equals, and I can count in sixes to help me work that out. So six, 12, 18, 24, so four times six is 24. So we can use those same three numbers to help us write a different multiplication. So if I know four times six is 24, I also know that six times four equals 24. Okay, and then for the division question, so the division questions here, um, I know that there are 24 altogether, so the 24, together and they are shared into one two three four equal groups so 24 divided by four and then there were six in each group so 24 divided by four equals six and then we can write another division question using that to complete our fact question uh, our fact family so 24 we always start with the biggest number when we're dividing so 24 shared into if we shared into six equal groups there would be four in each group. So that is our fact family that has been completed. OK, so com can you complete the number sentences to describe the array? So this time I've got an array here that you can have a look at. And then again, I want you to have a go at completing the fact family there. So two multiplications and two divisions using this array. So pause the video now while you have a go at those on your own. OK, so let's have a look at our first multiplication so we could have a look at how many groups we've got here. So if we think of these are groups of six, so we've got one group of six, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of six. So if I grouped these, you could see they would look a little bit like this. Uh, have a go at drawing around here with my mouse, not very easy. So there's my first group of six. And then if I did that for each one, you can see in the end, I would end up with 
seven, we said we had seven groups of six. So seven groups of six and seven times six equals 42. Seven groups of six is 42. So this also could be written as six groups of seven. So if I just show you what that looks like on the array this time, I'm just going to rub those lines out. So if I did six groups of seven this time, the groups would go this way. So here is one group of seven and my next group of seven would look like this. And in the end, I would end up with six groups of seven. So that would be written seven equals 42 and then if we're thinking about this as a division we could write 42 divided by six we had 42 into six equal groups that would be seven in each group or if we did 42 add between seven equal groups we would end up with six in each group so there's a number sentence there's your number sentences to describe that array OK, one more here. So let's explore this question. So tick the image which correctly represents the calculation below. And then I want you to draw a bar model to represent the answer. So we looked at bar models last lesson. So this says seven times six. So let's have a look. So we're looking for a representation that has seven times six, seven groups of six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six groups of six in here. And at the on B, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of six. So this would be our correct answer there. I'm going to cross that rub and draw on the tick. So our, our, we know that B would be the correct representation for seven times six. I wonder if you could draw a bar model now to represent that answer. So seven times seven groups of six, seven groups of six. Have a go now, pause the video and have a go at drawing that bar model. OK, well done. So your bar model would look like this. So we've got seven groups of six at the bottom of our bar model. And then the whole number is represented at the top. So the answer would be 42. So I can count in sixes to work out that answer as 42. OK, so I've added in a bit of a pre-step today. So you don't all have to have a go at this question, at these questions, but um, a pre-step is what might come before your step one. So if you just want to have a continuing practice, if you have some questions on your six times tables, you can have a go at, pause the video and have a go at these questions now. If you feel like you're ready to move on to the reasoning and problem solving, you don't need to do these questions. You can move on to the next slide now to have a go at some more problem solving questions. So here's the pre-step. Here are the pre-step answers. If you want to check your answers before moving on. And now let's have a look at some more problem solving questions. So these might be a little bit trickier today. So let's read our problem and highlight the really important information. So we've got there are nine baskets in each basket has six apples in. How many apples are there in total? Write a multiplication sentence to describe this word problem. OK, so first of all, the important information is the number nine. So we've got nine baskets and in each basket there are six apples and actually it gives us a clue here that we're looking for a multiplication because it does say there um, write a multiplication sentence so here you can see that the the problem has been represented visually using the nine baskets and the six apples in each basket so the calculation you should have written would be nine times six equals okay so nine times six let's count nine groups of six so we've got six twelve eighteen 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, and 60. I'm just going to check. I've just counted that wrong. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK, well, there's a big mistake then because we've actually got 10. It's a good job we checked. So I'm just going to cover over our basket because that one is not needed. So it's a good job we check, counted through and checked that. So actually nine times six we counted would be 
54. So can you represent the problem using a bar model? So have a go now at drawing a bar model to represent that problem. OK, so great, your bar model should look a bit like this. So the whole number, the answer was 54. And then we counted nine groups of six. And then nine groups of six equals 54. OK, our next explore question. So again, let's have a read through and think about what the important information is. So George has 18 coins. He shares them equally between six jars. And so how many will be in each jar? So the important information, we know there are 18 coins all together and he's going to share them between six jars. Now this word share is really important because the word share helps us to understand that this is a division question because we're sharing them into group, equal groups. So um, equal as well actually is really important. They have to be equal when we're sharing. So let's have a go at sharing these coins into equal groups. Um, so we've got the six jars there, so I'm going to share them into each group. And then I want you to be thinking about what you think the calculation would be. And think about um, how this might be written using a bar model or how this might be drawn using an array. So if you want to have a go at drawing either of those, you can pause the video at any point where you can have a go at drawing the bar model or the array to help you work out this calculation. So here you can see I've almost finished sharing these 18 coins into the six jars and I can already see now how many equal coins I'm going to have in each jar. So the calculation that I would have written for this question would be 18, because that's my total, divided by six and that equals three. So I can see that that equals three now. Um, I might have drawn that problem using a rare, an array a bit like this so I would have drawn out my six equal groups and I would have seen that they'd have three in them or I could use a bar model to show that answer so my bar model would have looked a little bit like this so well done if you had a go at drawing your bar model today so you can see that there were six equal groups of three and that to the total was 18. We're going to move on to our next our next number uh, explore question. So here we've got a question. It says Lottie is trying to solve the calculation below. So she says 30 divided by 6. I think the answer is 6. And she has drawn a bar model to help her find that answer. Uh, draw that uh, find the answer. So here's her bar model. So let's just have a look what she's got here. So she's got one two, three, four, five, six groups of six, and she's got 30 at the top there as her answer. Um, it says here, what has Lottie done wrong? So there's a clue there that she's done something wrong. So somewhere she hasn't quite got the right answer. Draw a bar model to show your answer. Um, I put there use an array to help you because that might, um, might help you understand what she's done wrong. So I want you to pause the video now and See if you can work out what Lottie has done wrong um, and then we'll go through the problem. So pause the video now. OK, so let's have a look. So here is my, what might the array might look like if she was drawing this problem. So 30 divided into six equal groups. So here are her six equal groups. One, two, three, four, five, six. And when I look at how many she's got in each group, I can see that there are actually one, two, three, four, five in each group. So 30 divided by six, the answer actually should have been five, not six. So because we know that five groups of six equal 30, not six groups of six. So here, so when you share 30 into six equal groups, you have five in each group. And the bar model should have looked like this. So well done if you had a go at drawing the bar model. So the bar model, you can see the, the total at the top was 30. And then when you share 30 into six equal groups, you actually have five in each group, not six in each group. So that's what that bar model would have looked like. So Lottie's got the answer wrong. I know this because 30 divided by 6 equals 5 equals 5. And now we've got the array and the bar model that proves that answer. 
So here is your checkpoint question. So Alex rolls the dice six times and it lands on six every time. So think about that key information there. So he's rolling the dice six times and it's landed on six, uh, sorry, 10 times and it's landed on six every time. He says, I got 66 altogether. Do you agree with Alex? Can you explain your answer? So start with Alex is incorrect because, and then perhaps you could draw an array or a bar model to help you to prove that you are correct. So have a go at that checkpoint question now. Okay, so let's see if you got it right. So Alex is incorrect. I know this because he rolled the dice 10 times and 10 times six equals 60. Okay, and then if you drew a bar model or um, an array to help you to prove that answer is right, well done. So if you got that answer correct, and you're feeling quite confident, you can start on step two today. Or if you feel like you still need a little bit of practice, um, start on step one. So have a think about where you feel you might need to start your questions today. So here is step one. So you're looking at some more arrays here and writing the calculations to match the arrays and then thinking about completing the fact families for each bar model. Or if you want to move on to the problem solving, start on step two. Remember to use that stem sentence, I know this because, to try and explain your answers. And you can always have a go at drawing an array or a bar model to help you prove that your answer is correct. Step three. And then a digging deeper question. And then move on to find your answers now to mark your work. So step one answers. Step two answers, step three answers, and then finally step four answers. So there are various answers for this question. And that's the end of your lesson. So well done, year four, another fantastic lesson.